name is Scott McCutcheon of Sovereign Studios. Welcome to episode 11 of the Yamaha Virago Cafe Racer Project. Um, I'm uh, excited to do this episode today because we're going to do a little bit of custom welding. Um, so that's something new for us uh, that we'll be picking up. And I'm going to show you a little bit of that today. Um, we're not really going to go over too much of exactly how to weld, but maybe we'll speak a few notes of it for those of you who um, may be getting into it to build your own bike, that sort of thing. So uh, today our plan is to simply build the license plate frame. So we're going to build a bracket for that and see if we can't get it installed. Um, let's give it a shot. All right, so uh, first things first with our Yamaha, there's a couple different things that we could do for the license plate frame if we think about it, right? Um, you could really do whatever you want to with it. You could mount it, you know, uh, up under the subframe, or maybe you build some type of, you know, hang hang down bracket uh, that comes up where the sub, you know subframe would mount underneath the seat, right? So like uh, in that case, maybe you you know mount it up here somewhere. Um, that sort of thing. But we're not going to do that. Uh, instead, I, uh, I really like this style of the license plate frames. I'm actually like not super enthused with it on the sport bike. I've, I might actually go back to uh, uh, an, an upper mount and see if I can't mount the license plate frame further up in here for my sport bike. Um, but uh, back here, so a long time ago, I had um, this bracket on my CBR was actually installed pretty much in the same manner right here, uh, and I actually liked this one a little bit better because because of how it mounted. You see, it actually came up a little bit further, and you could read the plate better this way. So I liked I liked this one a little bit better. Um, you know, un unfortunately, I got in a accident. A woman hit me. Uh, while I was coming through an intersection, she tagged me right here, uh, right on the edge of the radiator where my foot foot is right now. She tagged me right there, uh, crushed my radiator, sent my bike flying, uh, messed me up a little bit. It wasn't too bad, but in the process it broke this, uh, because just the nature of it, you'll see that obviously it sticks out a pretty fair bit, and if the bike falls over, I mean, that thing's pretty much toast. Um, you know, so I, uh, Ended up getting a sturdier one. I think this one, if, if I were to get in an accident again or drop the bike or something like that, I think this one's going to be much better than this because this was this uh, real cheap kind of aluminum. Um, you know, some just bullshit bracket that I bought on eBay or Amazon, one or the other, I don't remember. Um, but this one was a much thicker piece of a solid aluminum. So I think that one will be better if, you know, it falls over again. But. Uh, Either way, I kind of like that style of license plate. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, I do agree that it's probably more uh, appropriate for a like chopper or a cafe racer like we're going to do. So in this case, we're going to want to reuse this bracket. So you can see where it's already kind of broken. Uh, but we're going to reuse it in such a way that it mounts kind of like this. Right? So basically, we're going to build a little L-shaped bracket that welds here and comes down here to mount on this screw. Right? And then every time you need to take the wheel off, unfortunately you'll have to pull the bracket off. But it's not going to be that big of a deal since you're pretty much going to end up pulling that bolt anyway. So the bracket will come off with it. So we mount it here. In this case, uh, I figure we're going to take a piece of uh, I think this is eighth inch steel, yeah, eighth inch steel, and um, what does that say? Well, doesn't really work if you can't hold on to it, does it? Yeah, just about eighth inch, probably more like ten gauge steel. Um, so we're going to take this 10 gauge steel here and uh, make a little L bracket out of it. So my thought is that I kind of already measured it out. You see these lines. 
we'll make it about this thick, right? Um, and then we'll chop off an extra little piece to weld it together so it has a little flat spot against there. So as you can tell, I've already kind of measured it out, sort of, right? More or less. I think that'll mostly work. Uh, so let's go ahead and start cutting this up to build a bracket. Okay, so as I said, I already kind of like measured it out. This will be the length, right, from the edge of what we need. And then ideally we're going to want, um, you know, we just kind of right about this length here. Um, right about there. So we really just take this chunk out. Um, and we're just going to kind of eyeball it, but I think... Uh, The reality is that you're probably looking something maybe about three inches long and one inch wide right so three by one we'll cut that out um, cut that out and kind of go from there so of course when you uh, you're gonna cut something like this you know you're gonna want to put it in something like uh, vice um, you know to help make the thing more stable while you cut it and then of course you'll want um, you know big pack gloves and your safety glasses All right cutting wheel in place and there's our uh, bracket that we'll end up using not too bad so So the next step with these things that I always like to do is you gotta kinda like prep it. So since you've cut it, it's gonna be super jagged and kinda uh, messy. So I like to hit it with the grinder to make sure it's smooth again. All right, smooth down. Pretty good little bracket there. So, next step I think is going to be to prep this, right? In this case, I think we're going to want to take it down flush because of where it broke off. That's not going to be good. There we go. So basically we ground that flush and now we got a good aluminum surface to weld against. So I've never actually welded aluminum so we're going to find out how this works. Um, I guess right now. So aluminum to steel will be kind of interesting. I guess. Um, but I'm not a super good welder but these are probably some of the best welds I've done so far. Um, they look okay, and this is going to be, uh, uh, we'll talk about this in a later episode, not quite there yet. Um, either way, uh, where's our bracket? Here we go, bracket. So, next step here is going to be creating a little tab for this guy. So, essentially, we're going to drill a hole here at the top. I'm going to want to bring it out. Maybe we do that, kind of. Put the fatter end over there. And then I'm gonna wanna have a little bracket that sits flush like that to weld up here to give it some sturdy 
sturdiness. Um, so let's pick and choose some metal. I think this piece might already be cut to a good shape. Um, pretty close to it. So let's go ahead and just use this since it's already pre-existing. Um, I'll go ahead and shore this up. So, let's use that tab. So essentially how we're going to do this is I'm going to kind of tack weld it in place, I guess, to start. But the trick is I have these magnets, and this is really what's going to do the, the real work. All right. So in this case, we set it up more or less just like this. And this way we'll be able to weld right here. So, okay, let's uh, kind of take a look at how welding works real fast. Um, none of you guys have welded before. This will be kind of new. We're not, there's a ton of videos on YouTube already about how to weld and all that, so we're not going to go too deep into it. But if you've never done it before, it's actually pretty difficult. Uh, well, I'll take that back. It's relatively easy, but to get it done really well is really difficult. So we're going to go ahead and kind of basically just follow some of the guidelines here. Uh, like I said, we're using 10 gauge steel, so let's go ahead and set it up in such a way. Voltage at 4, wire speed 45, looks pretty good. We'll flip it up. I got the gas on. Obviously, you need your helmet. And we'll kind of go from there. As you can see, right, now we have a little L bracket. Not too shabby. Let's go ahead and pop the other side. We could flatten out this weld a little bit. Obviously, you know, I got a little happy with the bead there. But otherwise, I think it's fine. I guess, as you can see, since the bead was sat high enough, I need to flush that down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And now it's more, much more flush. Right? So now we'll have a better surface to mate against the bracket. And that looks pretty good. This thing, as you can see, it has uh, these three screws in it uh, that hold the back piece on the bracket itself. We're going to go ahead and pop these off to make it a little bit easier to work with. Pop these piece off, you see this curved piece just popped right off. We'll wash this here in a bit. Um, now we got that. So again, I'm not really sure exactly how to mate steel and aluminum. Uh, I've never done that before. But we're just kind of roll with it, I guess. Aluminum being a real light metal I expect will burn real fast so we're going to turn the voltage down a little bit uh, and the wire feed speed as well so even for the quarter inch metal or quarter inch, sorry, inch metal. Uh, I'm not really sure but we'll see how it goes hopefully it's not Yeah, look at how much that ate into that aluminum there, real fast. That didn't really work, but instead we're going to build our own. So, I, like the, I still like the idea, but we're going to need to build it out of steel instead of aluminum. I don't know how to do this. This is trash. Um, it's just not going to work.
Now we have a plate that is more or less the same as this. Doesn't really matter. That's pretty much what it is. We now have that plate. It's a little closer, if not quite as elegant. Spare license plate from my old CBR, right? And in general, it'll pretty much just fold over just like that. Uh, so we'll want to kind of mark the holes where the holes will need to be drilled so that we don't uh, You know so that we don't weld into those Now we have a plate with some good holes that have been deburred. We're not going to cut up anybody, you know, rubbing their fingers on it. Okay, I'm not really sure how much battery I'm going to have left of my camera. I'm sorry, it kind of died, so I had to do some of this off camera. But essentially, we end up with an L bracket, okay? L bracket, flattened on one side, flush, welded, welded right there to make the L. And then, of course, a hole so that it can be mounted, um, you know, so that it can be mounted right here. So, uh, now that we have the L bracket in good shape, we also have the plate itself. So, I modeled the plate off the aluminum one that came off my CBR. This is a steel one that's bent, you know, in a similar fashion. And then, of course, I just drilled the holes there so that we can actually, uh, you know, bolt the plates into it. So, the next trick here is that we're basically going to weld these two pieces together. Um, and essentially, we're going to put it right there, kind of. Uh, the idea being that, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. it all that well but the idea being that we bolt this piece down here and this piece sits right up here with it um, just kind of flush flush against it so let's give that a shot <laughs> install this on the bike we're gonna want to go ahead and give it a coat of paint uh, I'm gonna slap some black onto it um, you know so that it matches the rest of the uh, the Virago uh, and then we'll go ahead and install it and I think we'll be good to go okay and uh, like I said this bolt comes out of the frame right here um, and then I went ahead and grabbed a spare lock washer even though this bolt already has one um, like uh, you know attached to it so we're basically going to end up with two and we'll put the metal uh, the metal bracket in between the two lock washers as this thing tightens down so let's go ahead and grab it. that rusted ass bolt just snapped on the inside of that fucking frame. Fuck. So this is this is gonna suck. Um, basically, you know, this bolt snapped off while I was trying to install the bracket. This was the original bolt that held this thing together, and you know, obviously, it was trash. Um, unfortunately, the nature of it is such that. It's going to be pretty difficult to get out, um, considering where it is. So I'm basically just going to drill it out, and uh, I guess you know I'll have to re-thread the hole if necessary. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> You know what, 
but this small bit is just not going to cut it. Um, let's just punch straight through. I uh, don't have all day to spend on this. I know you guys don't care to sit here watching me deal with it for ever. So it popped out, but uh, it popped out in such a way that I almost guarantee I've wrecked those threads. So we'll have to rethread it. Um, I think we can get away with using this one, most likely. So let's go see if we can find a bolt. Um, I want to say this is a M8. Yeah, eight millimeter thread. Um, so hopefully I got something in here that will work out for that. That maybe. Yeah, so still an inmate thread. It was long. Yeah. So this one's gonna work pretty well. We'll use this. And I know that's a good, solid, stable bolt. Unfortunately, uh, oh, that lock washer probably will work. But we'll need to get a uh, second one. Which uh, looks like, I got one right there, yeah. Cool, so bolt. Two lock washers. That'll be the new thing. Um, now as far as threading this in there, let's grab some thread cutting oil. Uh, this stuff's pretty good. This uh, OD clear thread cutting oil. Um, it's not too shabby. Alright. So, thread cutting thing, tack a wrench. Just kind of drop that right there. Now you don't need much of this stuff. Just a tiny bit will do the trick. Alright, so at that point we should have threads again. Pretty good. Uh, able to really see down in there or not. Well, let's uh, try it. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So there's good threads there. Cool. Now that we've re-threaded that thing, punched it out, we, uh, we're good to put the bracket back on. And uh, it's turned out pretty good, I think, uh, overall. Not too shabby. So, once again, you're gonna want a lock washer there. Um, a uh, lock washer on the bolt itself, right up in there. There we go. Now, I suppose I need to go get a uh, wrench. And there we go. Nice, solid. Nice, solid license plate frame. All right? Not gonna hit the uh, brake actuator there. Looks good to me, man. Very good.
Okay, great, cool. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching this. If you did, uh, maybe like, subscribe to my channel, and uh, maybe check out my game, Ethereal Legends, on Steam. Um, hopefully, uh, this turns out to be a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. I think it's gonna be great. Uh, maybe in the next video we'll, we'll get to do the subframe and the seat. And that'll be real exciting. Uh, after which we can kind of finally start doing wiring, which will be uh, excellent. So, getting ready to start her up. That'll be fun. All right. So, um, catch up with you guys in the next episode. Have fun.